my sweaty story doesn't have any sex in it. <laughs> but it does involve something hard between my legs. I was 11 years old when I entered seventh grade. I guess if you want to get all technical, you could say I entered seventh grade from behind. Because the year before, I was only a fifth grader. About halfway through the school year, my teachers had a conference with my parents where it was determined that I would finish the year in sixth grade and then advance to junior high 12 months ahead of schedule. I thought that was pretty cool, to be honest. What nobody mentioned, not my teachers, not my parents, not my small circle of friends, was that I no longer fit in anywhere. The kids my own age resented me for moving on without them. And all the older kids disliked the idea that some smug bastard had weaseled his way out of a whole year of homework assignments. <laughs> Seventh grade was a big transition. We had to memorize our locker combinations. We wrote our honors English essays with pen rather than pencil. And we had to shower with 25 other people. <laughs> Academically, I was ready for seventh grade. No question about that. My brain, which I was always so proud of, felt separate from my body, which was still a work in progress. Physically and emotionally, I was still a year behind. An older brother would have been great, a real lifesaver, but I had two older sisters, and they were no help at all. What did they know about avoiding bullies or strategically positioning your trapper keeper over your crotch in order to conceal any unwanted third period boners? <laughs> Foolishly, I wasted my whole summer reading library books and Mad Magazine and watching reruns of Charlie's Angels and Mork and Mindy. Unbeknownst to me, all the other boys in seventh grade had spent their summer doing push-ups, squeezing zits, and growing body hair. Some of the more sophisticated kids used their socks for jerking off or huffing glue. I had no idea socks were so versatile. As it turned out, my seventh grade nemesis was not found inside the classroom. It was P to the motherfucking E, physical education. Coach Stabler was an ex-Marine with a flat top haircut hidden beneath his baseball cap. The rumor was that he'd served in Vietnam and the Marines had turned him into a lean, mean killing machine. <laughs> Behind his back, we called him Coach Unstabler. <laughs> and we all believed he carried scars we could not see. He wore the requisite white short sleeve shirt with a four button placket, tucked into athletic shorts that came down around his knees. Crew socks, athletic shoes, a windbreaker. He wore the same outfit every day rain or shine. He had mirrored aviator style sunglasses. None of us ever saw his eyes and nobody ever saw him smile. Coach Stabler was an alpha male with a whistle, which he blew often to get our attention or to signal his profound disappointment with us. He always carried a clipboard where he made notes about attendance, participation, and performance. He led us through our warm-up exercises in the gravelly cadence of a USMC drill instructor. Jumping jacks, push-ups, sit-ups, and endless four-count burpees. We ran laps when we were good, and we ran laps when we were bad. I was used to being top of my class. I was accustomed to being called on first, having my work read aloud, and asking for extra credit. I didn't come from an athletic family. We played no organized sports, and we did not spend our weekends watching baseball or football on television. When I was 11, my favorite teams were the Marx Brothers <laughs> and the Three Stooges. My idea of healthy competition was ringing a buzzer and providing answers in the form of a question. 
I happily participated in academic decathlon, mathletes, and Kiwanis Bowl, but I dreaded the batter's box, the free throw line, and the penalty kick. The only regular exercise I got was raising my hand in class. <laughs> I was a total suck up, a teacher's pet, but there was nothing I could do to impress Coach Stabler. In the classroom, I was an MVP, but in the bizarro world of our blacktop playground, I was the least valuable player, the worst standing broad jump, the fewest sit-ups, and among the last to be picked when we split up into teams. On top of that, I had asthma as a kid. When we ran around the track, I would fall behind, gasping and wheezing like the little engine that couldn't. <laughs> my mother sent me to school with a note. And why not? She wrote notes to get my sisters at a gym when they had cramps. Why not a note that outlined my chronic respiratory disease? I gave the note to Coach Stabler, who read it without removing his sunglasses, and then threw it in the garbage. You're not excused from running, he said. When we ran the mile for presidential physical fitness, I had the fourth worst time, beating only a handful of endomorphs. And rather inexplicably, a kid on crutches who had also not been excused. <laughs> PE wasn't like my other classes where I could always identify some new fact or concept I had learned. The only thing I ever learned in PE was that I was not particularly good at PE. Ultimately, the biggest challenge I faced was neither Coach Stabler nor losing my inhaler. It was the 12-foot galvanized steel pole we all had to climb in order to pass his class. I'd seen firefighters slide down a pole at the fire station but ascending a pole seemed like pure madness to me. I watched as most of my classmates raised their hands above their head, pulled themselves off the ground, and gripping the pole with their legs, slowly inched their way up using a hand-over-hand -hand method. I couldn't do it. it. It made me dizzy to watch. It wasn't simply that my 11-year-old flesh was weak. My spirit was also unwilling. After a couple of weeks of pretend trying, I don't think I ever pulled myself off the ground even a few inches. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, when we entered the weight room to develop our pole climbing muscles, I hid in the corner reading The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Slaughterhouse-Five, quietly chuckling to myself. What was Coach Stabler gonna do? Send me to the brig? I was an honor student. I was gonna be valedictorian. When progress reports came out, mine sounded just like Fonzie from Happy Days. A, 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 A plus, A plus plus. In gym, I got a C minus. After the initial shock wore off, it finally dawned on me that it was gonna be impossible to maintain a 4.0 or better with that gym grade dragging me down. Forget about a four-year school, I was now headed straight to community college. I couldn't live with that, and I couldn't live with a C-. minus. I showed my parents my progress report the next morning, and my father was tight-lipped, perhaps a little embarrassed for me. But my mother called for paper and pen once more. Another note for Coach Stabler, something about how a poor grade in phys ed was causing considerable anxiety for her asthmatic genius son. <laughs> and maybe he wasn't aware, but I'd skipped a year in school and wasn't as developed as some of the other fellows. My mother even included a copy of my progress report so Coach Stabler knew what was at stake for me. Looking back, I regret not throwing that note right in the garbage. <laughs> Instead, I gave it to Coach Stabler after class. When he finished reading, he handed it back to me. I tried to look cool by casually crumpling it up and throwing a sky hook into the trash like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But I misjudged the distance <laughs> and basically threw it at Coach Stabler's left shoe. <laughs> Are you one of these kids who lets his parents fight battles for him, he said. No, I said. 
He asked me if I actually earned those grades in my other classes or if my mother had simply written a note for me. <laughs> yes, I said. Uh, I, mean, I mean, no, I, I'm a good student. I'm pretty smart. Then you better figure out a way to get to the top of that pole, he said. And that was it. No Vince Lombardi speech, no motivational slogan, no military wisdom, just figure out a way to get to the top of that pole. As he picked up the crumpled note and threw it in the trash, he said, tell your parents that grade isn't a reflection of your performance. It's your poor attitude. You don't have to be the fastest or the strongest in my class, but I do expect everyone to try. My face was hot and flushed as I shuffled out of his office. And in that moment, I hated Coach Stabler. Not because he had treated me unfairly, but because he had seen right through me. He knew that schoolwork was easy for me and sports were not. The poll was difficult, but instead of embracing the challenge the way I would a complex math problem, I simply dismissed it. I acted like it was beneath me and refused to even try. I was avoiding something new because I was afraid of failing and looking foolish. In this particular scenario, I was the dick. That weekend, my father drove me to a local playground. He taught me through the whole pole climbing process, helped me visualize what I needed to do, and he gave me a pep talk. He made climbing a steel pole sound doable and less daunting. It took some genuine effort on my part, but eventually I made it off the ground, wrapped my legs around the pole, and ascended a few feet before slipping back down. I practiced until some other kids showed up and I became too self-conscious to continue. On the way home, we stopped at a Big Five Sporting Goods and picked up a chin-up bar, which I began to use obsessively. In the weeks that followed, I started making incremental progress. I stopped bringing paperback novels to the weight room. Instead, I started doing reps like everyone else, waiting my turn for the machine, working up a sweat. Coach Stabler never said anything. Either he didn't notice, or he didn't care, or it was all part of his grand scheme. But lifting weights at school and doing chin-ups at home gave me calluses, and those calluses gave me confidence. One foggy morning before final grades were due, I climbed all the way up to the top of that stupid pole, grinning like an idiot, and I extended my middle finger in the general direction of Coach Stabler at the other end of the field. I don't know if he could see me clearly behind his mirrored sunglasses, but I knew my achievement would be duly recorded on his clipboard. I did not get an A in PE that first semester of junior high, but the B plus I eventually earned, along with a certificate for most improved, was certainly the grade I deserved and a grade I could live with. Thanks very much. Scott Krause, ladies and gentlemen. Scott Krause.